Hey, thanks for joining me on this edition of the podcast. I'm your host, Jason Brown, the inventor of SERP tracking and the co-founder of SERP Woo. And in this video, I'm going to go over everything I learned about starting a podcast or a vlog, all the things I did wrong, all the equipment I purchased that I didn't need, and dispelling any myths about podcasting, vlogging that you might have seen or just gathered from research, uh, especially on YouTube. So let's jump right into it. Uh, just as a side note, this is the first video that I'm making um, that, at least in a podcast format, that um, I'm actually making multiple edits in the video. So if the video seems a little choppy, uh, just know this is my first try. Uh, most of my other videos, especially the backlink videos, were all done in one take. Um, you know, but there were only, you know, three or four minutes. I already knew what I was going to say. This video is a little different. It's going to be longer. Um, so again, if things look a little choppy, they look a little not as smooth. Uh, just bear with me uh, learning how to edit each of these videos in a podcast format. So let's jump right into it. Um, you know, I... You know, podcasting is not something new to me. You know, back years ago, podcasting was hugely popular, um, so similar to what it is now, actually. And it was just audio only. Now, podcasting is intermixed with, you know, YouTube videos and vlogging. But podcasting was audio only format. And I actually had a podcast here on Serp Woo. And it kind of was popular and died down and got popular again and died down. And now it's, it's, it's intermixed with vlogging and YouTubing and it's kind of got this resurgence. So even though I've done it before, I never took it seriously. Um, you know, my old podcasts were just done on this blue Yeti, uh, microphone that, uh, while it did the job or maybe it was the microphone from my laptop, um, it did the job. It was uh, really crappy audio listening to those old podcasts now. Uh, even some of the old videos I did, the audio is just horrible. And as a perfectionist, um, I just kind of rode with it because at the time, I was like, hey, I'm just trying this out, trying to help Serp Woo. Uh, I don't have the time or the knowledge or even the money at that time to buy better equipment. So let's just roll with it. You know, let's take the spaghetti, throw it at the wall, see what sticks. Um, nothing ever really stuck at that time. And while I was very, uh, you know, I, I'll admit it, I was very jealous that I didn't have this uh, FM radio clarity sound in my audio, and I definitely wanted it. If nothing was going to stick, I wasn't going to spend time and money on it. So, you know, I was definitely about the cash flow, what was working. And now that um, YouTubing has gotten so popular, uh, vlogging has gotten so popular, video has definitely grown a lot more. I kind of looked back into getting into podcasting. And so I did a lot of research on YouTube and uh, was trying to look up, hey, what's you know, what's the best audio equipment to get? Uh, what's the best software to use? How do I connect these pieces together? Um, what's, you know, good video equipment? And I watched, you know, tons of YouTube videos about photography, audio, video. And it was always crazy that the same products kept coming up over and over again in these videos. And while I know that uh, a good product will definitely get talked about a lot, I mean, obviously, if uh, the Blue Yeti is the best microphone under $100, it's going to come up in a lot of videos. But what's really crazy is uh, as I look at these YouTubers' desks and their um, surrounding areas, a lot of them were, were the same. Like, they had the exact same equipment down the things that didn't eat you know even matter you know a good quality microphone a good camera is something that matters the pad though that lays on your desk or maybe the stand that holds your macbook 
I don't want to offend anybody. It, it's it's not that important. Um, you know, two you know two cylinder blocks could do as a desk. Uh, you know, maybe that's a little extreme, but that's coming from somebody that uh, used to use milk crates and a uh, a door as a desk back in the early days. You know, kind of like that Jeff Bezos picture if you've ever seen it. Um, but audio and video, there's so many options. There's so many good cameras. It's definitely important. Um, you know, again, the stand that your MacBook sits on for a lot of people, like there, there's not just one of these that are made. And what's funny is you go through these YouTuber videos, they all have the exact same keyboard, exact one down to the model. Uh, the exact same pad on their desk, the exact same stand for their MacBook. Um, a lot of them are using the exact same microphone, the exact same camera. And even as an affiliate marketer, I kind of got wrapped up in that. I'm like, oh man, I've got to have that keyboard. I've got to have that camera, that desk pad. You know, the difference in a $20 pad on Amazon or an $80 pad from another brand, it's it's not going to benefit you that much. Uh, a difference between a $400 camera and a $3,000 camera, you know, I know that's a larger price difference there. There's a big difference um, in quality there. There's a big difference in options. A desk pad, there, there's not that much difference. Um, so I bought into this belief that what I was seeing over and over and over again in these videos, product placement, um, especially during product reviews, because I'm the type of person I might be reviewing these microphones uh, that I, you know, that I want to find out what's the best microphone for audio or for my situation. I'm looking at the person's desk, what's going on in their background, what they've got hanging up on their wall. Uh, I, I, I'm looking at that stuff because I, I want to take in more about what this person does. You know, how is their key light set up? Uh, you know, things like that. And again, even a, a, as an affiliate marketer, somebody that's done this for two decades, uh, I got buying into, I had to have this boom arm. I had to have this light and I spent a lot of money on it. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate in that regard. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of money buying tons of microphones, tons of camera lenses, tons of lights, tons of different equipment like uh, cabling, um, mice, keyboards, monitors, things for the desk. And I'll be real honest of you, with you, 90% of it's not used. Um, I've got uh, probably six microphones and I use one constantly. The other five, I couldn't tell you what the audio quality was like. Um, I got a GoPro camera that I've never used, uh, that I was going to use as uh, my, my video here on, on my desk. And instead, I bought a Sony 6400. And uh, it, it's used all the time. I've got five lenses for it. I've only used one lens, the lens that's on it right now. Uh, same thing with lights, uh, boom arms. Um, you know, all kinds of things. I've got a MacBook Pro that maybe I've used one hour and I, I, I've had it for four months. I, I just took to my PC. So the number one thing that I would tell you is this. Most of the things you think you need, you do not need it. And most of the things that you see on YouTube were either given to those people or they're sponsored or it's an affiliate link, and that's what they can make money on. That's why all of these YouTubers have the exact same keyboard, the exact same mouse, uh, the exact same monitor, microphone equipment. A lot of them are given it either in product reviews or sponsorships, um, or they simply fell into the same trap I did. They seen you know a hundred other YouTubers using this exact same Logitech mouse, and that's what they ended up buying. Um, so, you know, again, most of the stuff that you think you need, you do not need starting a podcast. Now, obviously, as you grow your podcast and you want better quality and can afford it, yeah, you can buy two or three different microphones, uh, two or three different cameras for, for camera angles. But starting out, 
you do not need most of the stuff that uh, you think you need. And you also don't need half of the things that the people on YouTube are pushing. If I were to break down the most essential items that you could do with that are actually quality is I would get an iPhone 13. Um, you know, maybe you can get an, an, an iPhone 12. Maybe Samsung makes a comparable product. Uh, I couldn't tell you about that. But grab yourself just an iPhone. You, you probably have one now iPhone has an excellent camera, shoots excellent resolution for YouTube videos. And simply put that on a tripod and get yourself, uh, you know, a, a cheap Rode microphone. I'm not endorsing Rode. Rode is not sponsoring this. But you could get a, a cheap Rode shotgun mic and connect it to that iPhone and you're off to the races. Do you really need a key light like I have? No. Do you really need um, other lights, like what they call a hair light? No. I've got all those things, and quite simply, uh, you know, I've even got this orange light in the background. And quite simply, you, you don't need it. Um, you know, any keyboard you have, almost any computer you have now and monitor will do just fine. So that's my first tip. Uh, use what you've got. Uh, when starting out, you, you do not have to worry about getting the best equipment that you need. What you have now will probably work. And what you don't have, you can buy very cheaply and it will still work out good. The second thing I would tell you is th this is so much work, uh, especially if you're a perfectionist like I am. You know, I battle even making this video right now. I'm, I'm noticing sounds in the background that... Um, make me cringe that you probably do not hear. Um, there are certain things about maybe the way I look, what's going on in the background of my screen right now that irritate me. You know, there's some um, loose papers right there uh, that, that irritate me. Um, there's, you know, sounds, you know, like I said, um, you know, even the lint on my shirt right now, bother me because, um, you know, as a perfectionist, I'm looking at all these things thinking that, that I need to retake it. So if you're a perfectionist, you know, this is going to struggle with you, especially if you listen to your audio and, and you hear this hiss or these background noises, maybe you don't like your voice. Um, you know, maybe in the, the video portion of it, you know, you, you're like, oh, this is in the background. I've got to move it. Some people, uh, you know, may question why in a lot of my videos I've got an orange background and now I've got this black, uh, this black right here is, you know, is the video being cut off. Um, you know, there, there's so many things and, and that's just being a perfectionist. That doesn't even come down to the actual editing of these videos and it doesn't come down to content creation and scripts. I can tell you right now, I don't script any of my videos up to this point. Uh, I, I've, I've got a general idea of what I want to say, but I don't script. Uh, I haven't done a lot of editing. Uh, so just a perfectionist part of me is a lot of work for this. Um, you know, it, it really comes down to putting in the effort if you want to make a good quality podcast. Because again, you know, like I said Prior, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos for all the stuff I'm interested in. And I can tell you, um, before I even started doing this podcast or vlog, I would come across some very professional done videos and loved them. And then I would hit up this video that, um, you know, was a review of a camera or a microphone or a knife or something. And you could tell it was really bad like this person was using a point and shoot camera from 10 years ago today and they were just using the onboard mic on that camera and the audio was bad there was a lot of wind noise going on you couldn't hear the person the video was all over the place uh, shaky unfocused and I, I, I couldn't watch it you know no no hate about that person at all but 
when you're severely distracted, you cannot pay attention to that video. So it takes a lot of work uh, to really make something quality that somebody is going to want to watch and continue watching until the end. Uh, you know, keeping that um, that retention. And then hopefully you can get that person to subscribe, like, or comment, a, a positive comment, and come back and watch more of your videos. And, and that's simply really hard to do if everything is very low quality. I'm not saying low budget. I mean, you can make quality stuff on low budget. It, it's hard. Uh, but if it's all low quality, it, it's almost impossible to keep somebody. So just the editing part of it and the technicals part of it is challenging. If you're a perfectionist, it's, it's even more challenging. Uh, but it's definitely something that puts in work that, that you've got to put in work for. So if you're not cut out for the work, you know, I don't want to be a, a, a dream killer. But uh, if you're not cut out for the work, just do something else. You know, play, play to your strengths. Um, if you've got the time, you've got the dedication, yes, you've got to start somewhere and start with that low quality and build up. But do realize this is work. Uh, you know, maybe TikTok videos can be lower quality, but something like a, a podcast or a vlog, it's going to take work and it's going to take time. You know, the, the, the viewers do not come overnight unless you have just this viral sensation. The monetization doesn't come, oh, you know, overnight. The big bucks from that monetization does not come oh, uh, overnight. You know, Serp Wu, we've trained more than twenty thousand uh, people. Uh, you know, that's the number that I remember from years ago. It's probably a lot more now. And we send emails to them every week about these videos and our YouTube channel. You know has less than 600 subscribers. Uh, we don't get that many views, maybe three or 400 views a video. So we're sending these out to people who want to hear from us that, um, you know, we're not some code open to these people. And our numbers are low. You know, how do you think if we can reach that many people each week and we have low subscribers compared to things like Mr. Beast and, and other channels, um, or just compared to the SEO industry by large, if our numbers are that low, um, and we have people that we can send this to weekly, what do you think your chances are starting out with no email list? Uh, it, it's going to be very hard. And if you're not producing quality content, it, it's just not going to be there. If you're not putting the work in to improve, uh, you, you've got a long road ahead of you. Uh, so that'd be my second point. My third point, I think, would be that I wish somebody would have told me that I should have consulted and paid for experts to show me the ropes a little bit. So I'll give you a brief example. Uh, because I'm a perfectionist, uh, because there are certain things that I want, I'm really picky about my audio. I think that's probably why I have so many microphones that went unused. Um, while I did constant searching on YouTube for audio tutorials, I bought a lot of audio equipment besides the microphones, things like interfaces. Uh, you know, I've got a, if I look at it right now, I've got a Focusrite, um, Scarlett 2i2. I've got also a Go XLR. I've got a cloud lifter. I've got a bunch of X, uh, XLR cables different brands. I've got all the microphones, obviously, uh, pop filters, fuzzy screens, uh, lavalier mics. Um, I've got a lot of software that goes unused. Um, but if I get away from the waste, the point that I was trying to make was I really wanted my audio to be clear and perfect. And I wish I would have paid somebody months ago, maybe even years ago, to actually help me with my particular situation. Because when you're watching YouTube videos, a lot of the people will tell you what products to buy. 
again, because they're being sponsored or it's an affiliate link, they got it for free and it's maybe, you know, the only thing they have. So they're doing this review on it. I wish somebody would have told me for my setup what I particularly needed because I watched videos about how great the Go XLR Mini was or how great the Focusrite Scarlet was or how great the, the Shure microphones are. And to be quite honest, it wasn't for my application. You know, your application is actually a lot larger than just plugging a microphone into an interface and then routing that through your computer. Um, it, it actually uh, has a lot to do with your location. You know, right now I'm in a basement. Uh, it's the only free space that I have with, with my family. And while it's a great work environment for me to do online marketing, it's actually pretty horrible for making YouTube or podcasting. Um, you know, it's, I'll just, you know, I'm sure most people's basements, if you live in an area that has a basement, a lot of them are unfinished. Uh, my basement is finished, but it means I have a hard concrete floor that has tile on it. I've got drywall. Uh, I've got a ceiling that is drywall. And for sound and acoustics, that's almost horrible as is. Uh, this black that you see right here is actually a blanket, a sound blanket. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll correct myself. It's actually a moving blanket that I use as a sound dampening tool. Um, I've had to put rugs down on my carpet to kind of squash out the echoing. Uh, that's something that I had to learn over time. And uh, anytime, you, you might hear it in this video, Anytime someone on the main floor walks around, you know, going to the kitchen, going to the bathroom, just walking through the halls, you hear that and the microphone picks it up. You hear somebody talking upstairs, this microphone will pick it up and it goes into this video. That, that means I have to do a lot of editing. Maybe editing that I don't know how to do, that I don't know how to do, sorry. Anytime somebody runs uh, the shower, the toilet, the kitchen sink, the dishwasher, that's going to all come through sound here in this basement. So I've had to learn, you know, putting down rugs, putting up a, a, a blanket for sound dampening, uh, putting acoustic tiles on my ceiling. And even then, it's it's not perfect. It still gets picked up. It, it, it never is soundproof. It's just deadened. Or maybe the frequency goes from a higher frequency to a lower rumble type frequency, but it, but it's never gone. And even though I got to a place where my particular acoustics were okay, uh, I learned that the microphone I'm using produces a lot of hiss. And this is a sure microphone, one that's recommended by a lot of YouTubers and a lot of people in the industry. Now, there's a lot of other pro microphones that are, you know, $800, $900, $2,000 that are recommended as well. But starting out, you know, I paid, I don't know, I think maybe $350, $200. I don't even know the price. I know it was somewhere between $200, $300 because that's my price range for most things. Um, this was the best microphone to get as far as speaking, and that's based off another microphone called the Shure, I think it's SM7B or V. This is its little brother. Um, a lot of broadcasters say they use the, the bigger brother of the microphone that I have, so I thought this would be a good bet. And even with a lot of the sound removed, this microphone makes its own hiss, its own um, noise. And, you know, it's for somebody, again, if you're a perfectionist, this is something hard to deal with. And once I figured out the acoustics and I figured out how to edit the hiss out of my microphone, the problem then comes, what about your noise gate? What about your EQ frequencies? What about your compression? And trying to figure all of that out is a major headache unless you're a professional in audio engineering and I'm not 
I'm just an entrepreneur. I'm a business person. I'm a marketer. And I'm trying to push these videos out as best quality as I can. Now, listen, I can definitely hire a, a Fiverr gig, an Upwork person. But I also like doing things myself because I like the quick turnaround. I like the uh, perfection that I can put into videos uh, or the work that, that I do personally. So, you know, trying to hire so somebody to do this could be an option if this channel takes off. But for right now, I mean, less than 600 subscribers, less than 400 views a video. I I'm, I'm not going to pay f somebody at Fiverr or somebody at Upwork to do that and then not get it perfect like how I can do. And you can argue that I'm not spending my, my time wisely, but this is what I want and what I want for, for this channel. But I wish that um, I had paid somebody not to maybe edit these videos, but to tell me what are the frequencies, what is the acoustic treatment, what's the microphone that I should be using for my situation. You know, what's going on for my location, my situation. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say that's that's how Serp Woo was founded. Um, I had the same problem with SEO. I was so tired of people giving me generic SEO advice. I wanted to know the SEO for my specific industry, my specific keywords, my specific niche. Um, and I should have done that with these videos and audio. Um I wish I would have paid somebody sooner, you know, and, and it's not just one person. Um, right now, I'm paying six different people on Upwork a um, fixed fee gig, so that's six gigs. And what I did was essentially hooked up all my equipment and set all the frequencies, noise gate, EQ, uh, compression, I set all that at default levels or turned those options off, made a uh, four minute recording, hired some people on Upwork and then sent them that raw file and asked them, uh, now these were all sound engineers, asked them, hey, how can I make this cleaner pro? How can I make this sound like FM radio? Or if you're old enough to remember going to movie theaters, uh, the, the trailers, the guy that does the narration on the trailers before the movie starts. You know, how can I get that level with what I have? I know I'm not going to get to that level, but based on what I have, based on my room, based on where I'm at, based on the equipment that I'm using, and what you hear and what I recorded, how can you get me as close as possible to that? And the answers were all over the board. Um, you know, I had people trying to tell me how to sound the damp in my room, which I can only go so far with that. Uh, people trying to tell me to buy like these expensive microphones. That's not going to happen. You no, know, the point was, how can I get the best with what I have? And I got it narrowed down to a few people that were really good at that. They said, hey, I totally get what you're doing. Um, the other part of this is I do a lot of live uh, not necessarily live streaming, but, you know, meet, meetings where I'm using Zoom, GoTo, Skype, Slack, and we're doing the video part of it. And unless you've got a, a physical interface your microphone can go into that uh, can capture that audio before it goes into your computer and out to the web, uh, meaning out to Zoom, out to GoToMeeting, out to Google Meets, you know, there's not a lot that you can do with your audio. But I wanted my audio to sound perfect even in those live streaming type of events and I said so you know trying to show me how to use Reaper or Isotope or um, you know OBS and using these filters a lot of that I cannot do on these live meetings unless it gets real complicated and I had a few guys come back and say, hey, I totally get this. I totally understand what you're doing. You realize there are some limitations. I listened to the audio, and here's how we can tweak it. And I had a few guys do that for me, and it was great. Uh, you know, this went past going to YouTube, getting generic advice that said, buy this microphone, hook it up to this interface, maybe change these settings in general to sound better, 
and actually paid for specific advice for my setup, for what I have. And if you do not do that, you're not getting the best of what you can. And if you're only hiring one person, which I've learned, you're not getting the best either. Uh, because one audio engineer will say, hey, everything sounds perfect to me. Maybe you just need to change your compression. And another one will tell me, hey, your frequency is under 30. You know, make that um, all the way down and cut those out. You know, here's how you make a high pass filter, which I already knew, but he toned it into the frequency specifically for my application. So I wish I would have paid somebody um, not to tell me what equipment to buy, but how to actually use what I have specifically in my environment for my setup by sending them a test file and letting them edit it and then getting the final product back and looking at it myself and saying, that's exactly what I want what I could not get from anybody else on YouTube or a vlog or a podcast. And now I can do this. Is it perfect? No, because I'm still learning. Um, you know, for live events, I think it's perfect for anything that's like this video. I've still got a long way to go past that because then I got to get into editing. Uh, so, you know, that, that would be my third point. I wish I would have paid somebody and paid them for the correct questions to get the correct answers for what I needed. And, and that's just something you're not going to get from general advice on uh, YouTube or a vlog or a podcast. Okay, I think my fourth point is you really need to master each of your tools, all of your equipment. And I think that's part of the reason why I've got a lot of stuff that goes unused. Um, you know, I don't want to grab something, start using it and not know it inside and out because unless you've got somebody that is full time or part time, that is your sound engineer on location or somebody who's your cameraman on location. You know, if you don't master your equipment, you're left to either doing this stuff, stuff yourself or passing it to Fiverr and Upwork. And honestly, once you pass it to Fiverr or Upwork or maybe another freelancer that you've just found, there's only so much stuff they can do in editing. You know, if you don't have your camera set correctly, you know, let's just say you've got your resolution set to 1080 instead of 4K, you know, they're not really going to be able to change that in post-production. Um, if you don't have certain things done correctly on location, you're limiting your freelancer or your gig worker. So it, it's really important, I think, to master each piece of your equipment. And I wish somebody would have told me that prior because maybe I wouldn't have bought some things that I'm not using currently because I would have had to took time to master each thing. And then as I realized I needed more than bought uh, as needed. But besides that, that financial obligation there, really mastering, um, you know, individual pieces of equipment have really helped me understand how to get more out of my videos and audio. Again, it's, it's not perfect, but I'm learning how to get to that perfection. You know, one example was uh, the camera that I use, which is, in, uh, you know, right now a Sony's uh, a6400, you know, I have, I spent hours, uh, days even going through each of the settings, learning how I could tweak each and, you know, in individual setting, not only for YouTube up, uh, uploads and get the maximum I can out of, out of YouTube, but how to get the maximum out of my videos for post-production too. You know, what, you know, whether that's shooting in log so that I have as much detail as possible when I go into post and edit, or whether that was, you know, learning how to get more battery life out, you know, out of it if I'm out in the field and not here in my studio, you know, what settings can I get away with for my particular use case that will also give me lo longer battery life. You know, little things like this matter. And it's the same uh, with my microphone. Uh, you know, my particular microphone is a is a dynamic microphone. Um, I can set it as condenser and use a cloud lifter with it to get some more clean gain out of it. But essentially, I've had to learn, you know, 
this microphone works best at this placement near my mouth, whether that's a fist, whether that's two feet, uh, because it's a, 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 a cardioid microphone. Now, if I had a shotgun microphone, which I do have, I've, I've got a Sennheiser shotgun microphone, you know, that placement can actually work different. I can actually put it up above me facing down and it can be two feet away and still pick me up pretty okay, actually. Um, you know, learning little things like that, plugging this into my Go XLR and then mastering that piece of equipment was very important as well because that piece of equipment helps me set my frequencies correctly, my noise gate, my compression. It also allows me to mix other sounds in if I want to. Um, and that's very important for me when I go into a live meeting with somebody. I want to sound as good as possible without a lot of background noise or echo and reverb. Um, you know, it, it's just those little things. And you know, something as simple as even my phone. You know, I was a uh, Samsung Galaxy. I, I had an S8 uh, just a few months ago uh, that I've had forever. And I switched over to an iPhone 13, primarily because the rest of my family uses Apple products and they have iPhones, but also because I could use it as a camera. And learning everything about that coming from Android over to Apple and then learning everything about this phone. So I've had to learn about the operating system as Apple. I've had to learn about this phone specifically. I've had to learn about the whole ecosystem because I bought other Apple products too and how to have my phone connected to my MacBook, to my iPad and be able to get notifications and do airdrops and like just all this stuff. Really mastering it so that I can get the most out of it, not just as a, a productivity and a functionality, but also how to get the most out of it so that when my podcast or my vlog or anything I'm doing with content creation, I can get the most out of it as possible. Uh, owed me years ago would have just been, let's just run and gun. Uh, I bought this expensive camera. It should just work out of the box. And as naive as I know that that is, sometimes if you're a busy you know, entrepreneur, that's what you've got to deal with. And then you pass it on to an Upwork person, a Fiverr person, and they really can't do much with it because the settings that you used uh, were incorrect. You know, you've got the wrong lighting, temperature of lighting. You're on the wrong resolution. Um, you're not in the right format, so it's hard for them to do post-production. You know, there's all these little things. Uh, so I wish somebody would have told me, master each piece of your equipment, uh, especially before you buy more equipment, but master each piece, uh, you know, unless you've got enough money that uh, you can hire somebody on set. And, you know, I'm not going to hire somebody to come into my home and do all the filming for me and, and have the camera set correctly and, and the microphone too each time that I want to film. Uh, so master your equipment is uh, another tip for you. So let's go ahead and get to it. Um, I'll tell you about the equipment that I use right now. You know, what I ended up settling down to with a lot of things that I bought and did not use um, or tested and just decided not to stick with. Um, you know, at the bare minimum, I've got a Sony A6400 camera with a um, lens on it. Couldn't even tell you the name of the lens, to be quite honest. Uh, I don't want to mess this up. I think it's like maybe a 16 millimeter F 1.8. Um, I'll research it and leave it in, in, you know, in the description, but that's essentially the lens that I have and the camera that I have for this podcast. Uh, I never change anything about it. It's that one lens that is uh, a, a fixed focal length, uh, fixed aperture, and my Sony a6400. I don't change any of the settings on it after I found the settings I liked. I don't change the camera. I don't change the lens. Um, the microphone that I use currently for this podcast is a Shure uh, MV7. Um, you know, technically you could get away with 
just using something like a Rode, uh, vi- you know, Video Micro, uh, a Go, um, you know, uh, there's like an, a, a Video Micro or, or a Video NTG1, I believe. Uh, there's uh, some Deity mics that you could get away with. I have all of those mics. I've even got the newest road one, which is the uh, go to, not the wireless go to, which I do have, <laughs> but I've got the shotgun go to. You know, you could just use those. Um, you know, you could get away with a lapel microphone. Uh, just make sure it's good, high quality one. Uh, you don't have to have a $200 microphone, an $800 microphone. Maybe you'll upgrade to that later. But I would definitely look into a microphone that has a low self noise because you definitely don't want a microphone that uh, creates its own hiss or buzz. Uh, But you want a very low self noise microphone. Um, Depending on your situation, you might want shotgun, you might want uh, cardioid, you might want lapel. There's some other options out there like omnidirectional. Um, if you're looking for something really low self noise, um, I know that I was able to pick up, uh, some microphones that I actually use for field recording, uh, that are omnidirectional, that are low self noise that I had to get from England. Uh, you know, you could look into something like that, but you've got to be considerate of how that integrates into the rest of your equipment. You know, for an example, Uh, For audio, I could just use my Sony a6400. It's onboard mic. Sounds horrible. So you start thinking, okay, I've got to supplement that. Well, the Sony takes a 3.5 jack, and you've got to buy a microphone that takes that. You know, if you were to get a, a higher quality microphone, they might only be XLR connections, not the 3.5 connection jack. So you'll have a hard time or have to buy adapter equipment to connect that higher end microphone to your specific camera. Or you could simply say, I'm not going to connect a microphone to my camera. My microphone is going to be separate and go into my computer. And then you have that option too. Well, how does your computer take the microphone? More likely it's going to be a 3.5 jack. If you buy an expensive microphone, again, you're stuck with the XLR connection potentially. Now you need an interface, which is why I had the uh, Focusrite Scarlet and why I have the Go XLR. But, you know, you could, you could do without that. The 3.5 connection could be perfect for you. However, if you're using something like uh, an iPhone 13 or uh, an Android phone and that's all you got for a camera, now the 3.5 millimeter jack might not be suitable for you. You know, on my uh, uh, iPhone 13, there is no jack connection unless I have an adapter. Well, if I'm going to have an adapter, maybe it just makes more sense to buy a microphone that already has a lightning cable connection. You know, so you really want to think through these purchases. Um, You know, I ended up buying different microphones to test for audio, but that also meant I had to rethink configurations when I use those microphones, adapters, jacks and so forth but at a bare minimum you could get away with just a a cheap camera Uh, my sony a6400 is cheap compared to other more expensive cameras however you could get away with any camera that at least gives you 4k resolution at least allows you to shoot more than 30 minutes of video which is very important a lot of cameras They will not let you shoot more than 30 minutes of video. You've got to find a camera if you're planning to make long form content that will allow you more than 30 minutes of video per video. Now you could definitely take, you know, 15, 10 minute videos to get past that. But if you want long form like a podcast and you don't want to splice individual videos up together, you really want to focus on a camera that, you know, is 4K allows you to shoot more than 30 minutes of video, um, has connectors to where maybe you could connect the camera directly to your computer so you don't have to mess with SD cards. 
Um, you could e even get away with not a video camera, but just using a webcam that is at least, again, 4K. Um, for a microphone, you know, you're, you're really wanting to look for a microphone, if you can find it, that has low self-noise that fits the application that you're using. Again, that this could be lightning cables if you're using an iPhone for video. This could be uh, a 3.5 you know, millimeter jack if you're just connecting into, into your computer. Uh, if you do have an interface, maybe an XLR cable is going to work for you. But at the bare minimum, I mean, you could spend $100 on a 4K webcam, $50 on a good mic, I would probably push you to go up more to about $100 for a good mic. And that's really all you need. Um, you know, all these other accessories like key lights and hair lights, ring lights, you don't need them if you understand lighting. Usually you want a three-point lighting system, or at least that's what I wanted, you know, looking into my situation. But I'm in a very small room, and I wanted to keep it dark. So I wanted one light at a 45 degree angle from my camera right here. I wanted an, a, another light behind me, which is the orange light that you see here, just so I could have a little bit of disconnect from the background and make it more interesting. Otherwise, you'd be looking at a, a off-white, dark lit wall. And I wanted a hair light um, that actually c comes down and gives some uh, per perspective there. You know, past that, do you need like a specific key light? No, you don't. Um, you're you might look a little harsh on video though, um, so that's why I do have a key light that has a soft box on it, so it kind of spreads the light out. But you could definitely do without it. Um, you know, going into other things past that, you will want some type of uh, editing program. You know, again, if you're using a phone, the editing program might already be on your phone and you can skip past that. If you're using Mac, uh, you know, Fi Final Cut Pro for video is awesome. I actually use DaVinci Resolve and I use da DaVinci Resolve on my PC and on my Apple products. Um, I also use Audacity uh, for audio editing. And, um, you know, you, you can always pick this stuff up cheaply as you upgrade. You know, maybe you're not using professional lights right now, but you want to upgrade and you don't have a lot of money. Maybe you don't have a lot of room for a big key light that has a big softbox on it with an egg crate. Uh, you know, you could do something as simple as just this. This is a, a little light that I picked up. I think I paid less than $50 for it. It's got, uh, you know, this soft box already wrapped around it. Uh, and this light, you know, very easy to use. And I can do, mul you know, multiple colors. It's probably not going to come up on the screen correctly. But, you know, I can get a white light. Uh, I can get different colored lights, RGB. I can set the temperature uh, of those lights. You know, and that could just be something that for $50 you use as your key light before you upgrade to like a three or $400 system that is, you know, on its own stand and has an egg crate on it as well uh, or is re or is remote controlled. You know, there there's definitely options that you can go up there. Uh, the main part of that is you want to find quality equipment that fits your budget and also fits your needs as needed. You know, you definitely don't need, um, you know, I'm particular to Sony cameras. You, de you, know, you definitely don't need the newest $3,000 Sony camera. You don't need uh, the, the, the newest or most expensive Canon camera, even if it's a used Canon, but it's top of the line. You don't need that starting out. Again, maybe you want to upgrade to it. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend, and I found this out the hard way, all of your tripods, uh, stands, uh, carrying equipment, I don't, I don't even know names to half of this stuff. Um, like I've got this here. I don't even know, but you know what it's called. Uh, but I can take my, my iPhone camera and set it here 
and take this out in the field with me on location and do all these weird shots with it. Um, it it's not a stand. I don't, I don't know what it's called. I've seen it. I thought it was cool. I've used it. You know, all that type of equipment. The, the equipment that's not your audio, video, but it's supplementary. Okay, so again, tripod, stands, equipment like that. You want to buy the best possible heads for this equipment because I've learned that when it comes to, you know, setting these angles, positioning your camera a certain way, the cheap heads or the cheap ball heads, the cheap attachment um, is cheap for a reason. Uh, it either breaks, it doesn't work correctly. The cheap ball heads, if you rotate them down or to the left and then tighten the screw, the camera just, you know, keeps falling. Um, maybe they don't swivel in a direction that you actually need the camera in. Cheap connectivity equipment, like these ball heads. Cheap heads on tripods. Uh, cheap connecting equipment on boom stands. They make your life horrible. If I had to spend money on something, you know, if my camera was okay and my microphone was okay, my lighting was okay, if I definitely wanted to spend money on something, it would have been on the stuff that holds and secures and positions all of that equipment, all of that audio, video, and lighting equipment. Because when you have cheap tripods, cheap heads, um, you, you get so limited. You get so tired of readjusting things. You get so tired of them breaking. You get so tired of pieces and equipment not interconnecting together. Like certain tripod heads only fit this this one little, you know, like as, you know, like a, as an example, this goes on a tripod probably won't be a, able to see this correctly. But you have to have a certain kind of tripod for this platform to connect to. And there's some that are oval shape and some that take a, a quarter inch screw and some that take a, a larger one. Um, there's cheese plates that can help you achieve, you know, putting something slightly a few inches to the left or right that you might need. You want to spend money there, and I wish somebody would have told me that because I ended up buying tripods thinking they were all the same. Now, I knew they were different. I knew that there was going to be some that were plastic and some that were heavier duty. I didn't realize the interchangeable parts of these, like the parts that hold my camera, the parts that hold my microphone, would be different, that these screws would be different, that if you don't have the right equipment, you're limited into the positioning of that camera or microphone. Some of them just aren't rated for the weight, how much your camera weighs. And your camera will weigh different when you put different lenses on it. Um, I've got a gimbal that I thought would work with my camera and my phone and my GoPro. And the gimbal, you know, it works perfectly with maybe my iPhone. But once you add one of those aftermarket lenses to your iPhone, um, you know, that, that come with the case and you can screw this aftermarket lens on, on your iPhone to make it look more professional and act more professional, which pro tip, those don't, um, the weight of that little small lens throws the gimbal off the weight of my camera throws the gimbal off. You know, you're supposed to, um, recalibrate the gimbal each time you change the weight, but the gimbal has a maximum weight too. And if your camera it, you know, is over the max payload, the gimbal's simply not going to work no matter how much you recalibrate it. That's the stuff I wish I would have spent money on and more time on is all of the, of those supporting pieces of equipment. You know, you can have the best camera, the best microphone, the best lights, but if what's supporting it is crap, you're going to be really stressed out dealing with it. Uh, I wish somebody would have told me that's where I should spend my money and that's where I should do more research to make sure these pieces fit my particular equipment and they're good quality. They're, they're not going to break down. They're not going to be incompatible. 
and they're going to let me have more options into the future, like being able to use a cheese plate or add adapters, so forth. You know, these videos were, uh, you know, even on other platforms like TikTok, where it looks like these people live in a, a mansion, and it looks like these people have this Ferrari, and you go into the mansion or the Ferrari when they open the door, or you go into somebody's office, and it's perfectly clean. Nothing is out of place. A lot of that stuff, they hired somebody to come in and clean. Uh, they hired somebody to come in and place that. They've spent hours or days on that. And the sad part is, usually that's not somebody's office or their house. That's something they rent it. Rent it on Airbnb or rent it, uh, you know, on a weekly basis. Something that they came into and filmed temporarily, paid somebody to 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 be able to film in that space. You know, I see some videos where people are, are in a private jet all the time with some champagne and grapes and cheese and a charcuterie board. Come to find out, there's places that let you rent those planes, and the planes never leave the ground. You just go in for a photo shoot. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that that's what you're seeing on YouTube with, like, offices and stuff like that. but it, that's not what that office looks like day to day. There's no way that somebody is doing work, living a normal life, and uh, you know, being an average person with everything pitch perfect as that. I know there's neat freaks out there, uh, so please don't give me no hate on that. I know there's outliers out there that are neat freaks, and they spend you know an hour before they work cleaning up, and an hour at the end of the day, clean, you know, cleaning up, but. You know, I'm just uh, an average person that has kids and a wife and a dog. I have bills and responsibilities. I've got businesses to run, and uh, this is what it looks like. You know, this is the the real deal. And I wish somebody would have showed me their messy desk uh, and show me the reality of of what's actually going on before I got the idea that in order to be a content creator or a blogger. Um, or a podcaster, or, or or anything like that on YouTube, that I had to have this picture-perfect setup, you know, whether it was the perfect camera or the perfect cleanliness and organization, uh, that's just not needed. You don't need that. Um, and you can get forward and go forward with uh, just being you and having things the way that you want it. So those are all the things that uh, I learned starting a podcast or a vlog. Uh, also, some of the things that I wish I could do over or things I could uh, show to somebody else that were starting out. And hopefully I've dispelled any myths or uh, rumors or, or anything you've built up in your head about you know how to start one and what you need to have and want to have. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've had, please help me out. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it'll help me make more videos on this channel. It also will give me some indication of what type of videos that you'd like to see in the future. And if you've got any questions about the equipment that I used or things that I've learned that I did not cover, again, leave them in the comments. Uh, we don't enable comments for all of our videos, but I definitely do read them and we'll get back to you. Uh, you can leave me a comment with an email. And uh, if you leave your email in there, I'll email you back. Uh, it won't necessarily go live on our page for other people to see your email, obviously. Uh, but I'll definitely will reach back out to you and try to address it as well. Thanks a lot, and I'll catch you on the next video.